I was answering this question on Reddit for probably the 10th time a few days ago, and I remembered that I was planning on doing a video on the topic, so here it is. Why are some rockets able to do propulsive landings of the first stage, while others are not? There are a number of factors to consider that control whether propulsive landing is possible and whether propulsive landing is practical. The first factor is the payload margin that you have. Can you spare the fuel to land? Looking at the Falcon 9, we see that in expended mode, it can launch 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit and 8,300 kilograms to geosynchronous transfer orbit. However, if the first stage is landed, that reduces the payload to 16,250 kilograms to low Earth orbit and 5,500 kilograms to GTO for a payload penalty of 29% and 34%. Is that okay? It depends on the market you're targeting. If the majority of customers are here in reusable land, then you are in good shape. You can afford the performance penalty for most of the payloads that you launch. If your market is over here in expendable land, then you have issues. You are not able to use your reusability. For Falcon 9, their market is dominated by payloads that allow them to fly reusable, so they are in good shape. This was not true for the first version of Falcon 9. Its expendable payloads were less than the current Falcon 9's reusable payloads, and that meant it could not serve the target market in reusable mode. Another factor is whether you use solid rocket boosters on your launch vehicle, as the Vulcan and Ariane 6 will. These vehicles tune their performance by adding just enough solid rocket boosters to support a specific payload. For example, they might use the base rocket plus two solid rocket boosters. To land the first stage, they would need more payload margin, which means the base rocket plus four solid rocket boosters. The two additional solid rocket boosters might cost 10 to $15 million, which makes reuse much less attractive. The second factor is the difficulty of re-entry, and this is controlled by when the rocket stages. Falcon 9 has a beefy second stage and stages quite early, 120 seconds into the flight, at an altitude of 65 kilometers and a speed of 2200 meters per second. Atlas V from ULA and the upcoming Vulcan launcher have a wimpy upper stage and do not stage until much later, at 260 seconds into the flight at an altitude of 170 kilometers and a speed of 4800 meters per second. If we remember that kinetic energy is half the mass times velocity squared, we can arbitrarily set the amount of energy Falcon 9 has to deal with to 1, and then calculate the amount of energy Atlas V would have to deal with. The ratio is 4.8, and that means it would be much harder to protect an Atlas V first stage than a Falcon 9 first stage. The third factor is the engine count, which determines if we can use the engines to land. The Falcon 9 uses nine Merlin 1D engines, which produce a thrust of 845 kilonewtons each, or 7,605 kilonewtons total. A single engine can be throttled down to about 482 kilonewtons, and with an empty first stage, that produces a thrust to weight ratio of about 1.9. That is low enough that it is relatively easy to control the velocity in land, but it does require the so-called hover slam maneuver to do so. The Atlas V uses a single RD-180 engine that produces 3,830 kilonewtons of thrust, and it can be throttled down to 1,800 kilonewtons. With the Atlas V first stage, that produces a thrust-to-weight ratio of 8.7, which makes propulsive landing unfeasible. The fourth factor is the availability of engines and their cost. For Rocket Lab's Neutron, they will be using seven Archimedes engines. They build their own engines, and their goal is to create a simple and cheap engine, very similar to SpaceX's Merlin. ULA, however, does not build their own engines, so they are limited to commercially available engines. They have chosen the blue engine BE-4 for Vulcan, but the goal of Blue Origin is not to make those engines as cheaply as possible, or to make them a convenient size. Their goal is to make as much profit as practical on an engine they are already making for New Glenn. Their other issue is that they are inherently limited to engines that are available. They also consider the AR-1 from Aerojet Rocketdyne, and they could maybe consider the SpaceX Raptor or Merlin, but all of those have the same problem. That other company wants to make a profit on each engine. The last factor is the cost-to-benefit ratio. Is it worth the investment to develop reuse? Neutron is a clean sheet design, so they are doing all the engineering from scratch. 
Vulcan is an Atlas V derived launcher that uses the same second stage as Atlas V, and a redesign to support propulsive landing would be more costly. Neutron is designed to compete in the commercial market and therefore needs to be an advanced design, but Vulcan is designed to launch national security space launch payloads for the Department of Defense. Neutron is designed to have a high flight rate, while Vulcan is designed to only launch a few times a year. And finally, Neutron needs to be competitive in price, while the NSSL contracts value reliability and performance over price. It may not be worth the money to develop reusability for Vulcan, though Amazon has recently ordered a lot of launches for their project Kuiper Constellation, and that will change the cost-benefit analysis for Vulcan. Let's apply these factors to specific launchers. Falcon 9 has sufficient payload margin to launch for most of their customers and land the first stage. Their re-entry is relatively easy, and they have engines figured out. Their cost-to-benefit ratio is clearly pretty good. Electron is like Falcon 9 in most ways, but unfortunately they are only a 200 kg to orbit launcher, and reuse is harder for lighter rockets, so doing so would reduce their payloads to under 100 kg. That alone makes propulsive landing non-viable for Electron. They are, however, experimenting with catching their first stage with a helicopter for reuse. Starship is pretty obvious. It has all the characteristics to support both first stage and second stage reuse. Neutron is like an evolved version of Falcon 9, and therefore has the same benefits. New Glenn looks like a nice reusable design based on the factors I listed, though it's not clear how reuse affects their payload margin and the markets they wish to serve. Ariane 6 does not score well. They don't have the payload margin, and they use solid rocket boosters, so the economics of reuse are less compelling, and they stage high and fast. They do have the possibility of new engines, but they do not plan to do that for this launcher. It's not clear that they launch often enough to see a benefit from reuse. They are, however, starting work on an Ariane Next launcher that looks much more like the existing reusable launchers, including either reusable liquid boosters or triple core like Falcon Heavy. Finally, we come to Vulcan. Like Ariane 6, it doesn't have the margin and depends on solid rocket boosters, and it stages high and fast. ULA doesn't build engines. They have, however, talked about what they call smart reuse, where the engine pod separates from the booster, deploys a re-entry shield, and then is caught in midair by a helicopter, using the same approach as Electron. That would save the expensive engines, and it would have a smaller payload impact than propulsive landing, but it would have larger costs to refly. Smart reuse hadn't been talked about in the last few years, presumably because the cost to benefit didn't make it worthwhile, but with the recent Project Kuiper contracts, ULA has said they will be developing it. And that's the story on propulsive landing and what is required to make it work. If you enjoyed this video, please send me $1 for every Falcon 9 landing.